Hi folks, Jonathan Wilson, Toga Man Guitar Vials. Today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go off on sort of a little bit of a tangent lecture on uh, the direction we are taking Toga Man Guitar Vials, in particular into uh, pivoting into green technologies and so forth. But I need to give you a little background, I think. Um, for those of you who don't know what I do, I uh, basically make these instruments called guitar vials, which are guitar formatted violas. Uh, that have been popular in the uh, film and TV music uh, soundtrack space. And um, anyway, so these are special tools that are used for uh, film and TV composers and uh, musicians, uh, artists, and just people who love uh, music making. Um, uh, if you want to hear demonstrations of those instruments, uh, there are a lot of other videos on this channel that you can check out, so uh, please do that. And of course, if you're not into technical geekery and other types of, uh, you know, <laughs> pivot rants and all those kinds of things, then, you know, go hit that. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, the background of this and why uh, I'm taking these directions. Uh, I'd say about uh, five, six, seven years ago, I started really dabbling into uh, composites in general. And these were uh, solutions initially because well, for on a few levels. Uh, one was that I was having uh, difficulty with woods and humidity and climates and things like that. And of course, you know, I like to build my instruments. It doesn't mean I want to see them in my shop again. It means I want to hear them out in the world making music and creating joy. So I want to make the most reliable uh, products I can. And to do that, I've had to do a lot of innovation. Um, one of the things that gets lost in the conversation about doing research and development and innovation is, well, there is a cost. <laughs> um, there are many, many hours involved. There are expenses involved. And I have to ship a few of these along the way. And that's difficult. It's not like we can just say everything's going to be perfect for prime time all the time. In fact, when I started this thing uh, back well, I'm going back 30, 40 years, but actually, you know, the first try was 30 years ago with an arpeggione, and I was just a musician, you know, getting a, an instrument that I wanted for my own musical expression. I had no idea that this was going to take off and go into something that I would be making the instruments themselves rather than just making the music. So my music making days, and you won't be hearing a lot of albums by me. There are some, but uh, I've this is taking up all my bandwidth. And um, so back to this, uh, I was solving some problems with the fingerboards in particular uh, some years back. And we were, the ones from a long time ago were like this, where we had frets on them. And we also had a very limited amount technically of how we can shape the geometry of the fingerboards uh, because they wanted to spring out. The uh, other thing is that we pivoted over to cello strings eventually, I'd say about 2010-ish. And, um, those type of strings were suitable for bowed instruments, but uh, when you rub them against these uh, frets, they would wear them out and chew them up for lunch. So on um, two practical sides, one is that we didn't want to munch up strings, and the other part of it is, well, wanted to be able to make these with precision and repeatability and make a high performance part. One of the uh, iterations we went through for a little while was the use of CNC machines, which are sort of robot routers that do things. And honestly, this we were able to get good product out of it. Um, it still had the metal, you know, uh, embedded frets on there. Um, however, it still was like a man-hour nightmare. And even even though we had it like milled by a machine, we'd still have to do a lot of rough work to it, and the wood would move around a little bit climate, dryness, and a lot of things can happen with woods when we go into, uh, you know, various climate uh, things. For example, if you take tropical woods, or just any wood really, but tropical woods in particular, and you put them in the middle of a desert, bad things happen. Um, wood is like celery. It can uh, have a water content to it, so we need to keep it at a certain percentage. Well, that's a little bit like keeping the ocean off the beach if you live in places like California where uh, you can have a very dry winter, one day you can have rain and it's going to just swell up all the wood. If you ever notice your doors might not shut and open so easily, then you know why, because it's you know swollen up. Well then when you have it followed by a day of say, 
bone dry Santa Ana winds, well then, you have uh, fast con you know, expansion and contraction and often you, times you're gonna have cracks. And like I said about keeping that ocean off the beach with a broom where the job is never done and the tides come in and out, that type of insanity, it's like that maintaining wooden instruments. And um, frankly, I just want these things to go out into the world and make music. I don't want to see them in my shop again. <laughs> so basically, uh, I went uh, through the effort of creating a different type of fingerboard, and this was out of a carbon graphite composite. And this tied in also with um, something called the 10X Project, which was initiated initially in uh, early 2016 and um, to those of you waiting on those yes 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 I know it's it's a layered story as to why we're still standing here in 2021 and I'm just starting to get these out the door one of them is going to be leaving uh, this is actually a new iteration and I'm going to talk about that a little bit so this uh, basically the instrument is engineered around the fingerboards that I make, the Vial Glide fingerboards. Um, and it's a carbon composite uh, fingerboard with a uh, carbon graphite on the inside. It's uh, reinforced, it's tough. It, um, it actually, when it's apart, it actually has a sound like ebony, believe it or not. Uh, but nice thing about it is we don't have any climate problems with it. it um, from a performance standpoint, we can get it dimensionally optimal to where we, we get the right curvature, uh, where it's a little more, you know, and it just, everything's just laid out so nicely. And it allows us to, you know, give a vibrato on the strings and not like chew them up really badly. Okay, so the 10X uh, program was kind of kicked off by this part, which I had to actually close the shop for three months, which really hurt a lot back then. Um, because, you know, if you don't ship, you know, you know, the revenue hamster wheel gets locked up a bit. And so I've been having to juggle two worlds. One is getting these instruments built and out the door regularly enough to where we have, you know, have a laboratory to work in. Then there's the lab. Well, uh, that's been a little <laughs> rough sailing for a few years in a particular town I was in. We had a little bureaucratic uh, snafus out there. Let's just say, I won't go into the whole story, but it, it just, uh, it was very, you know. We wound up in Fillmore now, so I've got another shop. Um, unlike the other shop where I had it humidity treated, this one's not. So I'm very motivated to uh, advance the uh, art of uh, composites. And so anyway, the initial... 10X thing, which um, that was a horrible name just for something that um, I really wanted to rename later. And I think we're starting to arrive. It's starting to take shape and we're starting to see the directions. And surprisingly, it started off with carbon fiber, which I still use to some degree. Uh, and, um, you know, of course, in the fingerboards and the tails, we're using carbon composites. Um, there has this, been this big push of and I'm gonna go into a couple layers of reasons why we're kind of going in these directions with the 10, what was the 10X, and it's become more of a hybrid fusion construction of the instrument where we're kind of mixing a little bit of wood, mixing a little bit of, uh, say, carbon fiber, not, well, even carbon fiber sometimes, uh, flax and hemp in various combinations to get it tuned up. So, this is kind of like a, you know, we, we, we're aiming, but it's kind of ready, fire, aim, because these are going out. And of course, I have to uh, address any, take notes on, on behaviors of things as we go along. So in a sense, anybody who's bought one of my instruments for the last 20 years has been kind of in this big research project <laughs> that I've been doing. And uh, so we've been going over, we've seen that there is a, also a paradigm shift into green technologies, um, sustainable things, uh, not ravishing the rainforest. I'm gonna go through a few points of what, why I'm doing this and things that are not the factors and things that are. Um, I know that there are political and all these kind of agendas going on of all this crazy stuff that has to do with green stuff. Uh, I'm not like some sort of, uh, you know, 
I don't know, tofu chomping hippie, but I, you know, take little plant-based things just because it's a lifestyle choice, not because I have a political agenda. And I want to make that distinction. It's very important because we're doing this stuff for very practical reasons. And uh, having going into composites means that we can um, actually have a very, very controlled uh, outcome of, of our, um, our product. Wood is great, and it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's the original composite. On the other uh, flip side of that, when, we de when we're dealing with supply chains that are all over the place, it takes on a new meaning, especially since we're all sort of being railroaded into various things. So I have a saying, it's uh, either we get crushed by the green wave or we learn how to surf it. I'm choosing to surf it and master the technology to the best of my ability, and that's... Um, what, what I'm talking a little bit about in this sort of, I don't know, this lecture rant and uh, hopefully, um, you know, uh, pointing in the direction of where we're taking this as a, uh, as a company. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about um, the materials themselves that we're using and, and some of the directions we're taking. Also, um, like I said, I wanted to dispel a little bit about, you know, the, the motivation behind green ghetto stuff. If we're going to be, like I said, herded into the green ghetto, might as well be masters at it, right? So, um, as wood supply chains have, have been crazy in the last so many years, I also, you know, because I, I stopped using um, a lot of these rose woods and ebonies years ago just because it became a real hassle. I don't like paperwork. I don't like instruments crossing borders getting destroyed because they're the wrong wood or material or just too many questions. Uh, I don't want instruments cracking, flying apart, uh, that kind of thing. So really the motivation behind this is to be, make the best possible version of these instruments that I can. And hopefully some of my colleagues out there will, you know, uh, see what, uh, what I'm doing. And it's, uh, this is not something I'm trying to own the idea. I am just simply developing it. And like I said, there are, there are expenses involved. And anytime there's, there is innovation, anytime there is any sort of push in that direction, we take a few bruises along the way. Um, it's economically, it can be very tough to juggle both getting stuff out the door and doing the lab work. So I'm spinning two very heavy plates doing that. And, um, where, you know, I've never gotten into this thing to become some sort of big deal um, producer of instruments, uh, you know, to be a big company with a lot of employees and a lot of other things. Again, I started this thing from the position of being a musician who just simply wanted an instrument, okay? And what happened was I created the instrument, took a lot of flack for it because thought, people thought it was a silly idea, you know, a guitar, you know, arpeggioni, that kind of thing. Um, but I went and did it, and wow, people, you know, especially from the film and TV space, wanted it. I couldn't build them fast enough. I was not prepared. In fact, when I started this thing, all I had was a chunk of alder, a bastard file, and a dream. I didn't have a shop. I didn't have any of that stuff. Orders came in. Tools started multiplying. It started escalating, okay? Um, but then I had always a back order, and that's been true for almost 20 years. Um, that's why it takes upwards of six to nine months to complete an instrument, sometimes more. And in the case of some of these poor folks who've been waiting on these 10X, or what's become of the 10X uh, program, that is pretty much why. It's because I've had to ship instruments, keep a shop, and somehow be I have to operate severely under budget. This is not something that um, is for the faint of heart to do. And um, anyway, I know I'm going off on tangents, but I really feel that I need to at least put a semi-lecture brain dump out there because I really feel people need to be informed. So some of I probably lost a few of you maybe a couple of minutes into this, but um, I believe that a lot of this is important, so stay with me. Anyway, um, what we are doing... Um, 
we're going into materials that are, uh, so we start, like I was saying, we started off with things like carbon fiber, which is like, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. You can cut it with scissors and it's strong as steel when it's got a uh, um, resin in it. And um, well, we're also seeing similar approaches that can be taken and it's starting to be a growing field, particularly in Europe, but we're starting to see it here a little bit where we're taking um, organic materials, and this is actually kind of ancient technology, believe it or not. I know it sounds funny. We're going into modern composite approaches using old stuff. This is flax cloth, and this stuff is extremely strong. Um, in fact, it's, it doesn't cut with scissors very easy. You have to really, you know, it's like a, it's, it's something else. This is, uh, this is some hemp cloth also a very wonderful material. Now, I'm finding that it's, uh, we're, you know, finding the variety of weights and um, so forth. It's been a little crazy, especially, um, you know, with the composite industry, but there's been some catch up. I'm starting to see some more um, products coming in. These are some samples I'm working with right now that are, you know, from uh, Germany. And uh, these are various flax and, it's important from a technical standpoint, so I'm going to go into luthery geekery talk for a second, where, you know, we want, for example, the soundboards to have a certain sound, and that, because we have to have a certain density, mass, and, and we want the sides to be able to, to bend a little bit, but we want the center core to be really solid, but also resonant. So there are these little recipes that we're working on. So just because I'm shipping stuff, you know, I'm always trying to one-up the last build, and uh, so, uh, some of the stuff we're doing, for example, um, in the construction may involve, you know, some of this, possibly some of this to get a certain profile. Um, also, we're using um, outer veneers. Now, when we typically and traditionally, the instruments are constructed out of, like, this is a bent maple, for example, and you can see it's, you know, it's a veneer, but it's like, you know, it's about... Uh, I'm gonna say 75 thousandths thick of an inch. This is a veneer, but this is more like a, you know, papery veneer, okay? And so I'm integrating it with uh, the cloth in uh, various construction. Also, like for example, on the tops, we might be putting like a core material. I have Nomex, which is like a honeycomb kind of material. This is balsa. And um, you can get a really, really light and very vibrant and loud. But the, uh, what happens is when we do a, what's called infusion, which is we're taking a very water thin, uh, it's like an epoxy that um, goes in, into when we're, we're making this thing. And so we go into a vacuum, which is where it'll vacuum press and suck the resin through. Uh, we get this end product that, uh, let me see if I can find one here. Uh, well, here's an example. So this is um, a side piece that's actually from that same material uh, where we have the outer veneer and on the inside we have that flax. So it's very, very strong. Now, um, we have varieties of configurations we can do and that's where the fun is, that's where the research is, but guess what? There's only so many hours in a day and I have to ship a few of these along the way. So you're getting the best examples of what I've done that day. So something I might have made five years ago, 10 years ago, I'm proud of it that day, but I'm not quite, you know, I'm always pushing the, the bar as far as I can. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk about the flax for a second because it's very interesting. So if you went back to say medieval, uh, times uh, they from armor instead of using steel plates and those scales of those things because they were very heavy they were making um, the uh, armor plates out of flax and high glue and um, you know so the arrows wouldn't pierce it this is very tough stuff but it's also you know it's got the damping we need and it behaves a lot like wood especially when it's post cured for a while it starts really um, I've been very happy with this stuff and so basically this has got that outer layer and then on the inside we've got you know that so 
The construction of this instrument is what I call the hybrid fusion. And we can do this with cloth on the outside. Uh, we can do this with various, there goes the compressor in the background, um, various sandwiches, if you will, of material. And this is much like, I don't know, like a chef would take like ingredients and create some sort of killer recipe. And we're just trying to get a certain flavor profile sonically, performance wise. And so this is mad science, yes. <laughs> but uh, this is what we do and this is what I do. So to review, we started off, like I said, going into composites for the reasons that wood was failing in practical terms. But that doesn't mean we don't love wood because we do. It's the most beautiful stuff around. And you know what I found too, which is very interesting. So for example, like this one here has a, um, this has got a quilted cedar on the outside. The inside of this one in particular is carbon fiber. So I've been varying these out and getting, testing different things, getting some pretty cool results and, uh, you know, messing with the recipes, if you will. On the other hand, I find that even the outer part, so if we, make, if we take this stuff here and we use, say, this wood versus that wood over there, this, the wood differences still make subtle differences just as they would on, like, say, an acoustic guitar where we might be using a rosewood versus uh, maple versus, uh, you know, uh, cedar or whatever, uh, Spanish cedar they call it. Um, so there, you know, all these little varieties, if you will, even if it's in a little thin layer like this, do make a difference. Or if we go like, for example, with, um, you know, like a cloth on the outside looking instrument, we still might put some little hidden layers in there to kind of make it behave because for instance, uh, carbon fiber can be a little glassy sounding and if it's overbuilt, it'll just sound cold. So we're finding that, that, point where um, I think it was CF Martin, uh, Martin Guitars, uh, they started beefing up their guitars in the 70s because they got tired of them coming back to the factories. People started complaining that they didn't sound the way the old ones did. And the old ones were built more delicately. And it's just like the best sounding guitars are the ones that almost explode but don't quite explode. Well, I'm finding where that line is with these. But like, again, this is like a small laboratory and I'm shipping whatever instruments I can um, so I'm not a factory, please don't confuse that. I'm not a factory. I am a small laboratory that produces so many instruments a year. And what you are getting is the best cutting edge research that I can muster um, at the time. And I'm very uh, grateful, humbled, and um, honored to have been of service in this particular space for the uh, particular audience I've had all these years. So thank you very much for that. Um, basically, again, this is sort of one of those things of adaptation and, you know, keeping the art alive and it's sort of evolve or die kind of thing. Um, I'm not doing this because, like I said, I have some sort of Green New Deal agenda or, um, in fact, when it comes to certain materials, uh, like for example, all these woods and things like that were, uh, I've been using in the past, some of them I'm actually allergic to. Certain rosewoods, I got tired of clogging my belts up with these oily woods, by the way, as beautiful as they are. And just the hassle, the logistic hassle, the imports, the, the uh, regulations, the fact that they might become like illicit at some point in time. Um, I'm more interested in the instrument itself and how well it's built rather than what I'm making it out of. So if sea kelp turned out to be a great, you know, thing to compression mold and use a plant-based resin, well, we'll do it. And speaking of that, I want to go into uh, some of the other details here. So we are dealing with, you know, organics here, and that's an organic there. 
Well, the resin I'm also using, the infusion resin, is uh, a um, plant-based resin. I get this stuff from plant, France. Um, and uh, there are a few companies out there uh, that are starting to, uh, you know, uh, develop this field. So um, using a plant-based uh, resin on this, I'm also, um, with the varnishes, the outer finishes, um, Although the wood does get infused with this same resin, so it's actually stabilized and almost kind of like petrified in a way. Because it's such a thin layer of wood, it, the resin goes right into it, makes it really strong, helps resist cracking. And uh, when it kind of like post here, as like I said, dries out, it's got a really nice tap tone. It, it just, it's, it's amazing. So um, I'm using plant-based resins, plant-based or upcycled, I say, would say more technically would be correct bio upcycled uh, resins or epoxies in other places um, whenever possible. Some things, you know, like I said, these are carbon things here. These are um, the resin I use on this. I haven't really quite found a replacement yet. But we are, we are scanning the horizon. We're trying different things, taking the spaghetti, throwing it to the wall and seeing it with sticks. So, this, like I said, this part lecture, part rant kind of thing, I just really strongly feel though that I need to get the message out there as to what we are doing and what we're not doing. What we're not doing, like I said, is not some politically motivated kind of thing, but like uh, Wayne Gretzky, and I'm not no sports guy, but I, I like some of his quotes. One of them is, you know, you, you know to win at this uh, hockey thing, you've got to skate where the puck is going. Well, if we skate where the puck is going and we master it, why not, right? We are going to surf it, not get crushed by it. And um, I guess I like the other one too. We only, uh, we miss the shots we don't take. So I'm taking my best shot at this. And um, again, I, I appreciate your support and enthusiasm for my instrument itself. But I feel that there's a little bit of a broader picture and I really need to inform people about the direction that we are going with this. So yes, we are doing some green stuff here. I'm using uh, the neck wood on this is alder, which is a fairly abundant swamp wood. And the reason why I switched over to it from maple was more of a sonic preference. How it worked really well in concert with this fingerboard. So the combination of the two uh, gave me the, uh, the sound and the weight that I really wanted to achieve. Am I still exploring? Yes. Uh, but am I doing what I know works? Absolutely. And like I said, over the years we've, we've um, developed our tooling to where we can, you know, predictably make these things and get them, you know, aligned right and, you know, glued together right um, or bonded together right, whatever the case may be. We're having to use, uh, play with some various uh, chemicals and compounds sometimes but in general we're we're going in uh, to this uh, green uh, technology pivot anyway um, I see this as an opportunity and a challenge and I enjoy the engineering challenge of it um, I enjoy bringing the art uh, as, as far as I can take it and hopefully um, you know, uh, if there are anybody who uh, out there interested in what I do with this kind of stuff, um, I'm more than happy to, perhaps I might be doing some educational videos on this stuff, perhaps I might be doing some lecture classes on this stuff, and uh, perhaps collaborating with some other uh, people in, in this field, both in the um, instrument making field and in the composites field. So. Um, and you know, like I said, one of the uh, there's the other thing too is uh, composites bring up this whole thing. People just think of fiberglass boats and planes and windmills and you know that kind of stuff. But in general, going back, like I was talking about the um, the flax armor of uh, of a long time ago with hide glue and flax. You know, lutes were built that way too. Lutes were very delicately built out of very, very delicate thin veneers, a little bit of cloth, maybe like linen of some kind, maybe possibly hemp, I don't know, um, and a high glue. 
So we can take those same approaches to 21st century luthery or building. Um, I prefer to be thought of as an um, instrument maker, artist. Um, luthery can be a little bit, you know, you know that, but I love luthery too. So I like to learn the best aspects of each thing, but then apply different things to it. So um, anyway, I just wanted to give you sort of a ready, fire, aim kind of thing on this thing. And uh, other videos, I'll cover more about the actual, you know, we'll go into uh, demonstrations and sounds and things like that. But I really wanted to cover this and uh, get that out there, start the conversation. And uh, anyway, have an exceedingly awesome day. Be inspired.